Hello everyone, my name is Wendy. For those of you who have never been to my channel before or watched any of my videos, and for all of you that have been here for a while and that know me, hello, I'm glad to see you guys. I really wanted to make this video as kind of an extension to my testimony that I posted about a year ago. The testimony that I posted originally was the testimony of the day that I was saved, the day that I was born again, the day that I came to believe in Jesus Christ and that my story of what happened then. However, the more I've thought about it and pondered what our testimonies really are, our testimonies are pretty much our entire walk with the Holy Spirit. If I could go back and tell you all of the things that happened in the eight years since I have been walking with Jesus and walking with the Holy Spirit, there's just so much I could tell you about that would be a wonderful testimony of the way that he works in my life and how wonderful and amazing and fulfilling it is to be born again in Jesus. And that's the whole point of a testimony. It's not really about getting to know me. It's not really about my life. I mean, I'm just, I'm just like any of you all. We're all equal in this, you know. We're all sinners and we're all in need of a savior. And when we find him and when we accept him, those of us who have, the reason that we're on here or that we're in the world telling everyone how amazing Jesus is and wanting you to believe in him too is simply just because that's how amazing he is and that's how much fulfillment that he's brought to our lives. That's how much fulfillment he's brought to my life. So thinking about all the things that I could have shared and didn't in my first video, I wanted to put this out there as kind of an extension or a part two to my testimony. This is just one aspect of it that I feel like is really a good visual for everyone to show you that when Jesus changes a person, it's a real change, it's a true change, and he changes us from the inside out. He changed my mind. He literally changed the way I thought, he changed the way I saw the world, and he changed all of my perceptions and my perspective and gave life to all the dark places that were in me. And this testimony is based off of an aspect of me that I have not yet shared with you, but that aspect is that I am an artist. I am an artist by hobby, and that's also just a passion that I love. I was in high school when I first realized that I had a passion for art. I just started drawing one day and realized, hey, I can, I can actually draw. I can draw pretty well. So I continued to explore art and draw and create things. So I continued on in that all the way through um, all my, what I'd call my dark years, all the years that I was... Um, taking too many drugs and drinking and the years that I was oppressed and demonically possessed and just the really dark times in my life, all through those times I was making art. It's always been a form of self-expression for me, similar to my music. I always was very open and real and raw with people and that's how I was with my art. What I was drawing and what I was creating was a direct reflection of what was inside of me and all the darkness that was inside of me and the emptiness, it was coming out into my artwork. And you know, when I got saved, I did do some cleaning house, as you would say, and I did get rid of some of the things that I had that I had drawn that were very dark or demonic. I mean, I didn't really see any reason to keep those, but there were a few pieces that I did hang on to, and I wasn't really sure why, I just felt like I should. And now, you know, making this video and the Lord putting this video on my heart to make, I'm wondering if the whole reason I was supposed to hang on to them was for this very day and this very video so that you could see. It's a great visual. You can actually see what he did in me. You can see how he took me from darkness to light and how he took me from death to life and it was it is clearly reflected in my artwork. So this video is just going to be me pretty much taking you down that little journey I had artistically and showing you my art before and my art after. It's so the best visual proof that I have for you of who I was and who God has turned me into and I can't even describe it in words. I have such a hard time describing in words the magnitude of what he did for me and the magnitude of the change that took place in me and my art is a testimony. It's a testimony to Jesus Christ. I'm sharing these things with you so that you can see what he did in my life because he saved it. He saved my life and his spirit dwelling with me and, and being in his presence on a day-to-day -day basis is just it's it's the fulfillment of my entire life and my entire existence and I want that for you I want you to come to that place because I know so many of you are lost I know that you're searching and seeking for truth and you're just not sure what that is but I am telling you it is Jesus Christ it is it is in him it is through him that we find life and I found my life and so I'm just going to show you uh, behind me is my little art studio 
Garrett's always been very supportive of my creative passions, my artwork and my music, which is something I'm so grateful for to him, and I love him for it. And he actually um, built me this beautiful art desk so that I could have this little corner of our home turned into a little art studio so I can follow my passion and make art and express myself in that way. So I'm just going to show you a little bit of what's here, and then I'm going to show you my before art and my after art, and hopefully it just glorifies Christ, and hopefully you see him, and hopefully by looking at my before art and my after art, you can really see the change that happened in me and see how he took my death and he took my emptiness and he gave me life. Just a quick little tour of my little studio here just because it's special to me this is something that I feel like was given to me by God I mean he does that he's even though my life has not been you know full of financial wealth and full of every single thing that I could possibly desire uh, physically I don't need any of that but what he has given me is so precious to me it's just some some places to be safe some places to like withdraw with him um, one thing that I really pursued after I got saved was stability because I really didn't have a lot of stability in my life. And so this studio represents the stability, some of the stability that Jesus has given me since I've started walking with him. And it's just so precious to me. So um, that's why I'm going to show you a couple of the things here. They're just special to me. And it's just, um, he's blessed my life. These I are just used jars that were salsa jars and I took them and I made them into little paintbrush holders. Um, there's an A, an R, and a T, so obviously art. And then um, here is handprints. It's Garrett's handprint, mine, and my oldest son and my youngest son's footprint. And that was 2017 for Mother's Day. We did that. Uh, here's a special card that one of my best friends gave me that I think is beautiful. She knows that I love art. She knows that's part of who I am. So she saw that card and got it for me, and I thought that was really special. All the things that I keep here are just little tokens of my walk with Christ and the people that mean the most to me and the people who have loved me and sewn into my life. I mean, that's why they're represented here. This little uh, locket was given to me by my mom. This is a picture of my sister and I. I keep that here just to remind me of her life and this rock with the cross on it um, it was a church I was attending at the time we're giving these away I don't remember what the sermon was about but you know you were to take this home just to put it on your desk to remind you of Jesus and I took one you know I'm not I don't believe that objects have spiritual power like I don't believe that something with a cross on it is the power of God. It's just a rock with a cross on it. So those of you who are gonna right away be like, oh, you're worshiping an idol. It's not an idol. It's a rock with a cross on it. I don't worship it. It has no power. It was simply a little token that the pastor was giving away to just to have in the visual sight to remind you of the presence of Jesus in your life. And I took it because the Lord had led me to go to that church for a short season and it was special and I met some special people there. So when I look at that, I remember that season of my life. This here is a flower that Garrett made for me. I don't know how well you can see it. I dropped some rocks there. Um, he made this for me out of nuts and bolts. Uh, Garrett is a handyman. He's a craftsman and he made this for me. I was feeling low and depressed after the birth of my, I think my second son, and he made this for me to cheer me up and I thought it was amazing. So obviously that's on display. Um, here's another little cross that I got from a church. Same deal. Just reminds me of that season of my life. Here's a little ring box for my rings that Garrett handcrafted for me. It says GS loves WS. He's a sweetheart. He always makes me handcrafted things and he knows me. I don't, I'm not a materialistic person and he gives me, when he gives me a gift like this, it's so special. And that's really uh, the extent of it. I mean, it's just a little thing. It's a special place for me, somewhere I can come and and express myself and be with God and when I do paint and when I do draw and create art it's a very spiritual thing for me I do feel close to the Lord it's the same as when I'm singing I just feel close to him I feel connected to him um, here's some art that we're gonna get into here in a second that's my art um, in binders and my paints this uh, paint holder here he built that and designed it himself 
he's amazing. <laughs> so I guess I'm bragging on Garrett a little bit, but I'm just showing you some of the beauty that the Walk with Christ has brought to my life. And I guess now we'll get into the artwork. Okay, I will tell you right now, don't mind if you hear some sounds in the background. My boys are out in the living room and, I mean, they're being watched, but they're making noise. So if you hear noises or cars going by or anything like that, that's what the noises are. This is my artwork. It says 2006 through 2009. There's a couple from 2010 in here. This binder is really the binder that is full of all the artwork from my dark years and the years that I was unsaved. So I'm going to show you a few of these pieces and then I'm just going to show you what my art has turned into since I've been saved. I won't show you them all just for the sake of time, but we'll see some of them. This was some of the first ones I did. Hopefully you can see all this here. Just This was what I first drew in high school. As you can see, there's eyes with tears and there's a crying angel. I mean, even then, this was before I was really possessed. I was not even into the darkest part of my life and I was still, I mean, inside I was definitely hurting. But that was when I first realized I could draw. I started drawing things like this. Okay, this is the first one I really want to show you. This is the most disturbing image you're going to see. I sketched this probably about 2008, 2009. I used to work at a library as a part-time job, and we really didn't have to do anything unless there were patrons. So when we were just sitting there waiting for people, we were allowed to sketch or to talk with our fellow employees. And so I would draw, and this is what I drew one day. Let's zoom in on her beautiful face here. Just kidding, it's not. <laughs> um, yeah, it's a demonic pretty much like a corpse with of no eyes and her mouth is sewed shut and she's in torment. She's bound in chains like barbed wire. And I showed this to one of my co-workers who was my agent in college and he was like, wow, that's ridiculous. That's so creepy. And uh, I said, yeah, it really is. And I kind of thought about it for a second and then I said, you know what? This is like a self-portrait. And he just kind of laughed. He was like, wow, that's intense. And I sort of brushed it off because honestly, I was so used to darkness at this point. This was in my like darkest, darkest times. I was so used to it that <laughs> you'd think that would be like a huge red flag. Like, okay, you just drew a self-portrait of yourself and identified with this image. But um, yeah, that's where I was. And I felt blind, tormented, and empty inside. So yeah, that was how I related to this image. So then as time went on, we'll get away from that one. It's really not that great to look at. As time went on, I just kept drawing... Um, New agey type things, things that I would see in dreams, just things that were, were inside of me. And the crazy thing, I'll tell you this right now, is every drawing I would just start with an eye like that. I never saw in my previous artwork, my former artwork, I never saw the full image in my head before I started. I just knew I wanted to get something out of me and I would start by drawing an eye and then whatever else would come. Now this one is super interesting to me because I had no biblical knowledge at this point other than like the most major biblical stories. I knew the story of Noah's Ark. I knew the story of Moses. I knew the basic stories of Jesus, even though I had no idea like about what he actually did or what the meaning or impact was for, for our lives of that. But I had been in church when I was a little girl in Catholic and Lutheran church, and I got the basic stories. So here uh, is a dragon. And this dragon is underwater, as you can see with the bubbles, like deep in the ocean. And it's like a dragon with intellect and magic, which is why I was drawing this ball here. It's supposed to, I don't know, it, it, there's not really a point to the drawing. It was just creativity. But it's interesting that I was drawing dragons under the sea. And we all know that the Bible mentions Leviathan and calls the devil an old serpent. So I just found that interesting. When I look back through my art, I can definitely see biblical uh, references that I had no idea I was making. Here is just this monster coming out of its skin. Here is three demonic fairies, and that's another theme of my artwork. Most of the characters I drew when I was in this phase of my life, had they had no eyes. I mean, their eyes were whited out. More evil creatures. There was worse than this, but I did get rid of some stuff because there was just no reason to keep the really demonic I drew. I just didn't even need to look at those. This one's interesting, and I'll show you why in a minute. Here's a man. Look, he has no belly button. 
and he's got eyes on his hands, like the all-seeing eyes. And up above his head I wrote 2-O-M tell, which backwards means let me out. And then up here it says the oracle. So I was definitely drawing some creepy stuff. I'm pretty sure I saw this guy in a dream, which is why I drew him. And then, if you can continue on, oh here's another very prophetic. This one really struck me. Once I got saved and I looked back on it, I was like, wow. But look at this. It says, stupid fly. And there's a fly flying directly into the mouth of a carnivorous flower. And, it, I mean, to explain that parallel, that was me. I was the fly. And I was blindly and dumbly flying right into the demonic trap that was set for my life. Just like that. No idea that I was flying into my demise. And once I got saved, I looked at this and I was like, wow, I, I drew myself a warning and I did not even heed it. Here's a, a demonic gargoyle. You got, you see I drew soul and the first letter is a snake. I'm telling you, my art here shows you where my mind was. It shows you what was inside of me. It shows you lots of spiders. There was lots of spiders and lots of pagan symbolism. Lots of dragons. This one is also an interesting story. The demon, my supposed spirit guide that I had, um, he was known to me as Raven. And I was walking in a cemetery one day because, yes, I did walk in cemeteries. I really was a creepy person, honestly was, in my darkest years. But I was walking in a cemetery and I saw this gravestone and on top of the gravestone was this big raven. And I looked at it and I was artistically inspired. And when I got back to my room at my college, I thought, mm, I'm going to draw that. I'm going to draw the gravestone with the raven on top. So that's what I went to start drawing. And this is what I actually ended up drawing. That's not a raven, guys. That is a demon with raven-like feathers and wings. So I even creeped myself out then when I drew that, and I was like, why did I draw this? We all know why, but I didn't at the time. I was also drawing other, you know, biblical references. Look, here's two hands with a wedding ring holding the earth. And here's another self-portrait. Take note of these self-portraits because I drew some self-portraits after I was saved and you'll see the differences night and day. This is just a girl. She looks very lost, wandering at night. And as you can see, there's just darkness here. There's spiders and dragons and all kinds of mystical things. Now notice as well that the majority of my artwork here is in black and white and I actually think it all was in black and white and I only really started using color after I got saved which is an amazing testament. So some of the pieces you see that are colored I actually did that after I was saved like right after I got saved I went and started coloring things. Here we've got some kind of spirit coming out of a pyramid and this fish you know. We'll be fishers of men when we're when we're saved and we're all considered to be like that to be fish you know that are just swimming by and and jesus christ catches us and pulls us into himself and it's just interesting that here in this scene of like the pyramid and the the timeless clocks and this strange spirit this like spiritual land there's a fish jumping out of the water trying to breathe all these things, I mean, you can look at them and say, oh, you're making stuff out of them that's not there. No, this is my art. I know how I felt when I drew it. I know what I was and was not thinking. And I know what I see when I look at it now. I can see the references. This, obviously, more pyramids, more spiders, the moon, lots of nighttime. Just strange creatures that I would start with an eye and out would come. Things like that. Here. That same guy, the oracle, the one that said let me out, it's the same guy. I probably should go back and find him. There he is, see him? Same guy. And I drew this years later, like two years later or so. And I, I didn't remember that other piece of art. It's not like I was trying to draw his face, I just did. There's a black feather like from a raven. And yeah, that's pretty much all of my old artwork. So... Now that you've seen that, 
just keep in mind the themes. Lots of darkness, lots of depression. There's no color. There's just... I was lost. I really, truly was lost. I was so broken inside. I was in pain. And I was also dabbling in things I shouldn't have been dabbling in, like Wicca and witchcraft and paganism. And I was seeing things. I was seeing things in my dreams. I was seeing things, you know, inside of me. And, and a lot of it was was demonic. So that's pretty much my artwork. So now we jump into the light of Christ and what he did. And this literally immediately, and I mean immediately, like within days of me being born again, I stopped using pen. I started desiring to draw happier things. I wanted to use color and the expression, what I was starting to express was completely different than what I had been. There's like, I think that's one of the first things that I drew when I got saved look at that the sun and there's flowers and there's there's life there's life there's water and mountains I mean it's just different it's immediately different and it's obviously different look that was just done with some like Crayola colored pencils or something it's not the greatest but mountains and and water and and flowers and a rainbow I mean it's it's just completely different flowers and birds and now I'm going to close this binder because that's just a few pieces I have from after I was saved. But, uh, here, this is another, but this one was just, this might have been the actual first drawing that I did, but it was just like hell, you know, representative hell, and there's heaven, and there's earth, just representative, it's just abstract, but, I mean, this is the difference, guys, this is the difference that Christ made, it's visual, you can literally see it, and as I show you my next art, and I'll show you what I've been doing. I've been painting and I now write poetry to go along with the paintings. And you're going to see it. It's visual representation. Jesus Christ heals. The Holy Spirit of the living God through G belief and faith in Jesus Christ will heal you. So my camera cut off there. Uh, and I had been recording for quite a while that day. So I decided to end the video for that day and come back to it today. Which is why I'm here dressed differently. I'm going to now show you some of my paintings. It was very shortly after I started um, drawing my new artwork after I'd been saved that I kind of lost interest in sketching as much and I, I just felt like I wanted to start painting. So I bought some paints and I started painting and from that point that's been really what I love to do the most. I do still sketch sometimes, I do draw, but I mainly love to paint. So I'm just going to show you some of those paintings and you're really going to be able to see even more how having Jesus Christ, having the Holy Spirit with me has completely changed my perspective and the way that I think and the way that I express myself. This is the first painting that I made. This was done with oil paints and it's really simple but it's just it was supposed to represent the hands of God and then I felt like that moth was me just had been purified and that's why I put the cross on its back just to show that I had been purified in Jesus. So that's the first thing I really expressed through paint. From that point on I just I had this desire to paint and these images it was different than before. It wasn't like I just started with an eye like I did with my drawings that I was going to just um, get something out of me. This time I would actually be inspired. I would be inspired by something and see the image in my mind that I wanted to create and then I would start creating it. And I started out, obviously, you're not, you don't start out a master of anything. So when you see these artworks, this isn't like, I'm not claiming to be anything fantastic at art, but I do love to do it. And I have improved over time. This was one of the first paintings I painted as well. This is a horse. Again, it's almost like a self-portrait or just an expression of the gospel. But here the horse is running from darkness to light. And in the darkness, there's a black raven. I know it's kind of hard to see, but it's up in the upper right corner. And it's running into the light and obviously being led by a dove, which is representative of the Holy Spirit. I won't give you the full description of each of these art pieces. It would just take too long in this video. I just mainly want to show you the images and show you the drastic difference. And I know that visually it's, it's a lot easier to understand someone when you can see a picture of it. So I hope that this is giving you a good picture of, of my mind and how I was changed. Because I can see it when I look at it. This next image is just a woman with butterflies, and there was there's a description that I posted for each artwork, and I do have a Facebook page for my art. It's facebook.com slash art by Wendy Stahl, and I don't often post on there. It really is. It was just something for friends and family, but if any of you want to go there to follow me, 
feel free to do that. My personal Facebook is private. I won't accept any requests on that just because that I have that kind of locked down and it's only people that I've met in person that I allow. But the Art by Wendy Stahl is a public page, so you can go there if you'd like to see my art as I post it. This image was a dream I had, actually. I did. It was the first time I'd ever attempted to paint a dream. And in the dream, I was walking on a road at night with Garrett, as you can see, we're holding hands there, and we were walking on this road, and then all of a sudden, the stars started to like swirl together like this big vortex, and then the cloud rolled. They kind of came from the center of the sky and rolled outward and opened, and within that that mass of clouds, as they the sky split and opened, and there was this gorgeous rainbow light that shone through, and in my spirit, in the dream, all I could feel was, it's Jesus, it's Jesus, and I was so happy because I felt like I was going to see him. And it was a beautiful dream, so obviously I was very impacted by it when I woke up. I painted this scene, although it's nowhere near as realistic as my dream was, but hey, it's, it's as close as I was going to get. This image I painted for a friend, actually. She, she and I went to the same church many years ago. We went to the same church, and she actually started her own business in a small town near where I live. She sold clothing and merchandise that was responsibly created and also merchandise that was created by people in need to help their help further their lives such as women who had been rescued from sexual exploitation in other countries and people in third world countries who had been who had come out of slavery and things like that and there there are organizations out there that they teach these people how to they teach them a skill they teach them how to make something and then those products get shipped to the United States and other countries where they are sold so she sold products in her store that were mainly from organizations like that. And she was a wonderful Christian woman with a big heart for other people, so I wanted to bless her and so I made that. Here are some colored pencil sketches that I did. This one is based off of scripture, Blessed be the Lord my rock, who trains my hands for war and my fingers for battle. This was an intense image that one night I was, um, I was just very, feeling very heavy about war because I had been reading a newsletter, a report about the war in Syria and the violence and the, just the atrocities happening there, and I was very heavy about it. So I sat down with in prayer time with God, and I ended up drawing this image, and it was very powerful. And if you'd actually, if you'd like to read more about some of these these p images, some of these pictures, you can go to my Facebook, and the images are there with the description beneath them, so you can read more about them. This painting was also inspired by scripture. It was inspired by Psalm 1, verses 1 through 6. It's an allegory for, for us, for human beings, and those who are in the Holy Spirit and in God are like the tree on the left, and then those who are wicked are like the tree on the right in the barren land, and that's where that inspiration came from. And as you can see as I go through these, it's obviously a theme of, of God. It's, it's his word, his holy word is what I'm expressing, and color and just the beauty of a relationship in Christ is what I'm expressing. It's night and day difference from my previous artwork. And that brings me to these next images. Here's some self-portraits I did. Here's one self-portrait. And if you remember the other self-portraits, these are uh, quite a step in the right direction. And here is my favorite self-portrait that I've done. That is how I feel in Jesus. Just full of the Holy Spirit and praise and worship and his creation. It's all around me and it's within me and I just love, I love Jesus. I love him and my art now expresses my love for him. Everything that I do and everything that I say, even though I'm imperfect, I mean I'm not claiming to be perfect by any means. I definitely am a human, but when in my, in my purest state, in the state where I'm closest to God and in my most natural honest, real state. It's just a love for Jesus. That's what comes out of me because that's literally what I think about all day. It's, it's with me every moment. I just love him so much. And the whole purpose of me showing you these is really just to testify of him. I want you to know him the way that I know him. Not because I want you to be like me because I'm superior or something. That's ridiculous. I'm, I'm nothing. I'm nothing. I'm just, I'm this tiny human that he created and gave me the chance to be saved, and I accepted. And by accepting that, I stumbled into the most incredible fulfillment that I never expected. And I know that so many of you don't expect it. Everybody thinks, oh, it's not found in Jesus. This is ridiculous. I know how, 
I know how people think when they're not saved because I thought that way. I really truly did. I, I did not think that this was the truth and it is and it's so fulfilling and I hope that when you look at my artwork and you see the videos on my channel, when you hear my music, when you watch the, the testimonies, I, I just hope that you can see the joy that I have in Christ. And I did want to say, I really wanted to add this to this video, my life is not perfect. When I when I get on here and tell you about how amazing life in Christ is, I'm not telling you like, oh, believe in Jesus and all of your problems will be solved. You'll never suffer again. Everything is going to be wonderful and all your problems will go away. That is not what I'm saying at all. There's so much that still has happened to me since I was saved. So many bad things. I mean, pain and suffering. That, that's what we're going to see in this world. This world is the knowledge of good and evil. There's evil here. There's good here and there's evil here and humans are just kind of caught in the crossfire and there's a lot of pain and suffering and we have to battle our flesh on a daily basis when we're saved. So when I come on here, I'm not saying, oh, believe in Jesus and everything will be roses and my life is so perfect because it's not. But my inner life is thriving and full of joy and full of this supernatural spirit of God. And that is why I'm here on YouTube. That's why I'm telling you these things. That's why I'm sharing with you my personal life which in all honesty, I would prefer to keep private, but I want to share it with you because of how beautiful it has been. So I will leave you with this last image. This image is one of the more recent pieces of artwork that I've done. The name of this piece is Kingdom Children. And this is just showing the, the scripture in Revelation about how um, all tribes and all tongues and people from every nation and language of the world will be in heaven worshiping God together and praising Jesus for his salvation. And it's going to be so glorious and my heart longs for that day. And so I drew this and I know there's lots of racism brewing in our world right now and so many atrocities committed by people against other people. And I just, I have this hope, this glorious hope, and I know how much God loves all of us, every single one of us. He loves us all, and he's just waiting for you and me and everyone to, to come to his salvation and to come to his truth so that we can move on into the future in the light and the righteousness of God. So I'll just leave you with this image, and I thank you all for watching this. I know this video has been long, so if you stuck with me to the end, you're awesome. Thank you. I hope that it blessed you. And if you do want to read more about the descriptions on my paintings, you can go to my Facebook page. I pray that you're all blessed, and I will talk to you next time.